I'm Ben Heckendorn, and this is my master class. It kind of looks like one of those like uh, caramel bars, you know, where you can like break it apart in squares. Oh man, working with all this clay, it reminds me of that one Patrick Swayze movie, Roadhouse. They should do a William Shatner version of that song from Ghost. Oh, my love, my darling, I hunger for your touch alone. Okay, I know everyone's fingers aren't the same length, but see how my uh, middle finger goes quite a bit further than my index finger? So uh, I think uh, we should uh, accommodate for that. I'm also thinking uh, maybe I'll have R1, R2 there, but only have L2 here and put the L1 button somewhere else. I think trying to have four buttons here is going to be kind of confusing and we're going to run out of space, especially if we're trying to make this more curved than the previous attempt. So what we can do here is this surface can tell us where we're going to put the analog stick and we can just stick it right into the clay. Let's give this another try. It looks kind of high up, but it actually doesn't move too bad. Because remember, you don't move it with the ball of your thumb, you move it with the tip of your thumb. So I'm using my 3D print as a base and then building clay up around it. So I'm taking the part of it that I like and the part that I know will hold the circuit board. And then the unknown, I'm making out of clay. You call that a knife? That's a knife. Oh, maybe I should uh, take this time to answer some viewer comments from the previous video. So yeah, uh, I subconsciously pick up my thumbs, but I actually do it with my other fingers, not my teeth. And if you have a problem with that, I don't care. Let's see what else. Oh, uh, I think I fixed the audio this episode. It should be better, so let me know on that. And uh, I guess that's it. You know, if I was making a James Bond movie, I would look up the name of the person who wrote that Snake Eater song from Metal Gear Solid 3, and I would drive to their house and be like, Hey, how much money you want to write a Bond song? But no, they got Sam Smith. Also, I've started to make a groove here for the fingers. You know, I should have made this a left hand version <laughs> because then I could hold it in my left hand and then work on it using my right hand, which is my dominant hand. I think this is a pretty good curve here for the middle finger. So what I'm going to do is mark where I think the button would go. Ah, that feels exactly where it should be. So I've got a D-pad section there. I'm going to have a circle around that. Then we have our analog stick. There'll be a circle around that as well. And then this is kind of like our uh, hat switch. And that is for the additional buttons. So it would be Share, touch, option, uh, PlayStation Home. Yeah, I think this is pretty good. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to uh, basically try to draw this into the computer. Here's the photos I took of the controller. I took some distant photos, some close-up photos, and then a few end views of it. Uh, something about uh, taking photos for reference. Uh, you do want to try to be far away and then zoom in. The reason for that is the perspective will change. Let me show you this. Okay, so this is a photo I took close up of the controller, physically close up. And then I overlaid it with the distant shot. You can especially see the perspective change with those uh, helping hands in the background. That's the distant shot, close up, distant, close up. Uh, you know, the, the lens is spherical, so it causes the image to bend. So actually, the further away you are from something, the flatter the resulting image will be. So I'll probably use this one. So I'm, I'm interested in this angle there, this angle, this angle, and that angle. Hey, I was able to attach canvas in Fusion 360 
I also drew a uh, front-on reference of the analog stick and the D-pad so I can use these measurements as well as I'm extrapolating from the three-dimensional base design. I've drawn the base of the analog stick here and I'm using the one from the Hori pad. And I've drawn the uh, analog stick itself. I didn't draw all of it, I basically just drew the um, pins and uh, how it would affect the PCB. And then here is the analog nub on top of it. Try to get this as close as I could. Uh, basically, we want to, you know, look at this curve here so we can make an enclosure around it. It isn't actually a sphere. It's compressed a little bit, so I used the Eclipse tool to draw something as close as I could to what I felt the actual measurement was. But what we can do is we can use the shape to uh, drive how we make the enclosure around it. So you probably want, yeah, I don't know, like 0 0.05 gap, right? And then you would need the shell itself. You could probably get away with uh, 0.075, right? Okay, I drew the shell that'll go around the analog nub. I wanted to draw it in space like this just so I could see how it would relate to the uh, directional pad down here. So we'll have, you know, some mass here. And then the mass will come up and, you know, basically meet at this point. Probably like right about there would be fine. And then it will cover... I could take this and extrude it down to meet where the PCB would be, right? Then I could print just the shell and make sure it fits around the analog stick before I proceed. In fact, I think I'm going to do that. Let's try our clay mock-up with one of the shells we've printed. So we can just put that analog nub in place and then we should be able to just stick this on right over it. Press it down so it's level. Yeah. Cool. I don't feel any uh, crunching or scratching. So see what we can do here is actually, uh, you know, start 3D printing parts and then replacing the clay with the 3D printed parts and eventually uh, it will be the complete new prototype. Okay, so the four-way tack switch is there. We have our D-pad cap like that. I gave it like a really pointy uh, star look so you can kind of feel the directions with the edge of your thumb. And then I made a shell around that. I gave it kind of an aggressive curve just because I thought it kind of looked cool. What I need to think about next is, you know, how this shell goes together. Like the back of it is mostly empty, although that'll be a good place to run wires. Uh, yeah, so how will the uh, the curved portion in the front attach to the back? How is the PCB captured? Then I also need to think about how that will affect the triggers. So I'll probably just leave this portion like this for now and move on to the triggers. All right, I've made a sketch on this plane, basically where the uh, halves meet. And I'm going to copy the angle of the clay. It's a 15 degree slope, so I'm going to lock in 165 from 180. I can almost make that work. Actually, let's do this. Let's just come here and come 15 degrees from this. So we'll type in 165. Oh yeah, that almost lines up perfectly. I've extruded the trigger section up to look like this. So you can see we have our two slightly different curves for the index finger and the middle finger. The middle finger also has like a little bit of a bump here since it's longer and it snakes around better. It just kind of feels good. Okay, hot off the printer. So that's where that goes. Of course, we don't have the handle. I did extrude it a little bit uh, incorrectly, unfortunately, but we can get the basic idea where our fingers go. So yeah, fingers there. Probably put the other, uh, you know, L1, R1 there. Here's what I came up with. Using a base shape, of this with some trigger holes, some tack switch holes for the uh, L1, R1. I used this and I came up with this. Uh, L1 and R1, the shoulder buttons, those are gonna be little tack switches, as you can see here. Uh, so you can either get those with the inside of your finger or just move your entire finger back to press those. Okay, and those will be held in place by a shoulder PCB, which 
It can either be a PCB or just a piece of plastic that will hold the switches in place. Okay, so L2, R2 are going to be pressing against the original Hori PCBs as such. Of course, we need something to hold those in place, and that's where the trigger frame comes into play. It's got some holes in the back for the wires and the uh, rubber guides to fit through. And if you look at the end view here, the whole trigger frame will slide into this assembly. All right, now if you look at it from the end like this, you'll see I created a little bit of a uh, slope here so we can actually drive the screws. Ah, okay, yes, the analog PCB frame, all right? So that's gonna sit on top of the trigger assembly as such. So then inside of that is the PCB, the analog stick, uh, the D-pad is there too, and then there's an analog face cap. All right, so I'm going to print all these individual components, and then we'll see if they go together. And if they do, then we can start redesigning the right-hand side of the unit that holds the PCB, although that thing is pretty simple. Let's check and see how this goes together. All right, so we have one of our buttons here. Put that in place. Good. All right, here is the uh, trigger frame. So we're going to take the PCB from the existing joystick. And let's see, it goes in. Which way? Oh, like this. Okay. Got some holes on the bottom for the rubber. Cool. And we should be able to stick it into this slot. That slot down there, push it all the way that way, click it in. All right. Hey, there we go. I 3D printed another version of the handle. This has some grooves on it that will match the finger guides of the trigger assembly. Let's put a little hot glue in it just to hold it together enough. Now I can hold it and see how it feels. Ah, yes, I like the finger guides. It's like, that's where your fingers go. Oh, I get it. I can feel where my fingers go. I don't even have to think about this. Let's attach this layer. So when we make the final version of this cap, there'll be something right there to enclose that gap there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I like it. Look at that. Let's put the strap through. It's not quite the same angle as the bottom of the unit. So I'll just mark that off. And I can measure it later when I put in the other half of the strap loop. So it'll just have a loop here. I'll design a loop in there, and then it'll just Velcro in the center. The next thing I need to do, if you remember the clay version, is that I was going to have that hat switch right here for the other uh, joystick functions. So I need to design that into the 3D model next. So I'm be like, pew, pew, pew. You know, I can do the touchpad or the share button or whatever that is. And then the uh, secondary analog will attach to the bottom. What we can do is we can rip off the hat D-pad from the clay model and then just stick it right on here. So here's my thumb. So I'm going to put my thumb over there, bring that to my thumb. So I'm, anyway, I'm going to position this as best I can uh, in the clay and then I will build up the 3D model to match this. And then with the um, hat button, I'm basically going to take this point here in the 3D design, get the angle, go up and come back down, and then position the switch. I printed this piece, which is where the uh, face buttons are going to go. So now I can feel the thickness of it and see where my fingers end up. It's like when you uh, make a turkey drawing in kindergarten by tracing your hand. Yeah, I'd be kind of worried about pressing this button accidentally when you're trying to press this button. So these buttons here should be lower than these buttons. So these will stick up higher and these will be lower. So I've been laser cutting pieces of 1 16th inch plastic. This will act as a PCB. 
this one has it, it labeled circle, X, triangle, square. So yeah, I've just got these uh, pretty standard six millimeter tack switches. Should fit into the slots. Yeah, nice. See, then we can just go in here, flatten that down and solder it manually. I also have this, this is the hat switch. So this is captured by both sides of this and uh, yeah, there we go. That'll fit snug as a bug in a rug. Cool. So the idea here is we have our uh, face buttons on the grip and then we'll have this piece here, which will align pretty much like this. I printed another uh, test of the right hand side of the handle. So we've got a little indentation here. That's where those tack buttons will go. Okay, so this half will go here. Yeah. Something is uh, pressing it up. What did I miss? Buttons seem to work. I think it's finally time to make the lower analog stick. So what I've done is I've taken the upper analog, the nub, and the shell, and I've made them into their own component, which is this component. Lower analog, bodies, three bodies. I'm going to go, I'm going to take this, I'm going to go move, copy, and I'm going to rotate it broop, 220 degrees. But it can't be that close to the bottom because we need to have enough room for the wires. So what I propose is I'll make like a little sub-assembly for the analog stick, kind of like I have on the Xbox One controllers. And then that sub-assembly will rise up into this area here and be captured by the halves of the plastic. Because if you look at it from the end, this thing is much wider than the pistol grip, right? So I'm going to make this work just like the Xbox One single-handed controllers does, where there'll be a mounting plate for the analog stick, and then this cap will fit over it, and then there'll be screws on the side that affix it. So what I'll do is I'll create new sketches here and here. Then I'll extrude those sketches up to meet the bottom of the controller, and then that's how the pieces will connect. I've made some progress here. We have our lower analog, a PCB for it, and if you see right here, that PCB will sit in this cradle, so to speak. Then we need these flanges on the side because those are going to hold a screw for the analog cap. I'm going to go in here. I have a small hole that I drew. I'm going to do a symmetric extrusion. See that? Let's grab that again, do another extrusion, but this time, let's uh, get rid of that body and get the lower analog shell. Roop. Now we have a place to mount a screw. Yeah, so I had to actually reseed these flanges. See how the flanges are not that much higher than the PCB? That's because of the rotation of the analog stick itself, it would hit them. So that's why I had to do like this subtraction thing. So I actually receded it down. So this isn't flush, but it should still work. Although we need a way to hold this down. Because if you think about it, when the cap goes over it, what actually holds it in place? What prevents the stick from lifting up? Let's start assembly with the lower analog. I've got the analog stick here. It's been placed into a piece of engraving plastic, which will basically act as a PCB. Here's the original PCB for the analogs in relation to the main PCB. So we have the left stick here and the right stick there. So I've marked which poles on the potentiometers are positive and negative. And uh, if you see, the pattern is actually reversed. See the two inner ones here are ground and the two inner ones here are positive. That's actually uh, kind of weird, but whatever, as long as I wire it correctly. So this is going to be on the bottom of the unit. So I actually want to wire it in reverse. So when you push the whole thing forward, 
That would make your character move forward, back, left, right. So I actually have to wire it in reverse so that it uh, will work in this upside down state. All right, I've got the little PCB wired up. I wrote down what the pinout is. I have a black mark on the side so I know what the polarity is. Time to continue. I'm going to go ahead and screw the interface block to the analog base. I'm going to screw it first. That way I know it's aligned. Then I'll let some super glue seep in and seal the deal. Dalton, he'll seal your fate. So I'm going to put the analog stick, feed the wires through here. Now normally I would use uh, thicker gauge wire but I want to make sure I don't run out of space inside this controller, so I'm actually going to use thin wire as much as possible. Let's make a mark for the direction that this goes in. So the arrow means toward the back of the unit, or forward. It makes sense in my mind. So we got this right here. So we're going to put in the cap. The cap's also going to hold down. Oh, we need the analog stick itself. All right. Put the stick in place, put the cap in place. The cap will also hold down this PCB so it doesn't move up like that. Nice. Then we'll put in these screws. There we go. See, that's what I like about the clicky screwdriver. You can you can't really feel what's going on because there's too much mechanics in between, but you can hear when you've got purchase. So if you can't feel what the screw is doing, at least be able to hear what it's doing. Because once it clicks, that means it's ratcheting. That means it's being held in place by the material. Ah, there we go. Nice little analog module. Next, I'm going to attach this little clip for the lower strap. Same kind of thing. I'm going to screw it and glue it. Come on. You can make it through. You can do it. You can do it. Happy little clouds. Come on. There it is. It's like watching a baby chicken being born. You bred chicken raptors. Welcome to chicken pock. If this park doesn't succeed, I'll have egg on my face. Du, 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 du. Oh no, copyright strike BMG Universal. All right, I'm gonna snap the analog module into the base. Nice. Now what I can do is I can take this thin wire and compress it and run it under the PCB especially uh, something like this that's all hand wired, you can run out of space really quickly for wires. So I'm thinking about that ahead of time. Next, I'm going to wire up the multi-hat. So I'm gonna write down the proposed pinout for it, attach some wires from behind, and then put it into the unit. Now that it's wired up, I will make a polarity mark on the ribbon cable and write down the wire values here for further reference. Oh, that's in there tight. I don't think we have to worry about that accidentally coming out. I've mounted the PCB into the enclosure. Again, there are test points for pretty much everything. So I've just marked those and I should be able to wire the rest of everything from this side. If not, I can just remove the screws. So what I think I'll do is actually start wiring a few of these things such as the lower analog stick. See how the cable goes here, up here, and then this is the destination. I'll start wiring some of that stuff and then I'll work on the other side of the enclosure. Got the lower analog wired up. Now I'm going to attach the multi-hat switch. So I'm doing this kind of in layers. So this is the lowest layer, then this layer goes over it. All right, so the new trigger assembly that's going to be white to match this is printing. So in the meantime, I think I'll get this wired up. So this is going to be the right analog stick, kind of like the aiming stick, and the D-pad. Down is ground, right is ground, and the opposite side is reference voltage. And then the back here, I've attached a piece of wire 
to the tabs to help hold everything in place. And I've also attached that to the tack switch. So we have a ground reference point when you click in for R3. All right, here's the wiring for the analog stick. I'm going to mark one side of it ground. All right, I've got the D-pad wired and I wired it in such a way, not necessarily to make any sense, but to keep everything as flat as possible. And I wrote the pin out here. And I marked the up wire as black. So again, I'm gonna take a photo. I got my notes for reference. That means I can close this up and still be able to wire it. All right, I've got this wired up and ready as well. These are the face buttons, X, square, circle, triangle. Up, down, left, right. Uh, this part finally finished printing. I think I might need to print it at lower quality for the actual production unit. I did this at medium, took a couple hours, which isn't really, <laughs> isn't really great when you're trying to make a lot of something. All right, so I've got this piece here. So I'm going to just uh, stick it down here into the slot and then tilt it up. And that should, yep, that's pretty good. One screw might not seem like a lot, but keep in mind this upper portion is going to be held in place by this frame. So we should be pretty good. So we got a lip down there, screw there, and then held in here. L1, R1. So let's just put this in place as well. So this one does have additional screws above and below, because otherwise it's gonna flex. Because we also have to think about how this is assembled, right? So if I had slots here and here to hold this in place, I wouldn't be able to place it down in because there's slots and I can't put it on on the side because the tack switches have to come through these holes. So See this opening we have here in the plastic? That's so the screwdriver can go straight down and drive that screw. This screwdriver is very old. I've had it for like 34 years. <laughs> it's made in Japan. All the best stuff's made in Japan. I'm trying to think of the best order in which to assemble the next few parts. Should I attach this to the main handle and then just snake wires through here? Or should I attach all of this together and bolt it onto one shot? Good amount of wires coming out of this module, but there's, you know, there's some free space. So even if we need to tuck some stuff back in, I think we should be okay. You know what would be the cool thing about an afterlife? You could ask questions like, so uh, how much time did I spend waiting on 3D prints? Oh, really? Uh, this got done printing. So as far as this white sandwiching the gray, I thought it looked kind of cool. Plus I already had this piece printed. It'll also kind of hide in plain sight the fact that this is in three pieces because it kind of had to be. So yeah, we'll make the uh, design restriction part of the design. I made this black so it matches the cap since the cap being black is a constant. Line up the three layers and screw it in place. You might have noticed I drilled out the first two holes with a 2.5 millimeter bit. The reason I did that is so the screw will easily slide through those and only bite into the meat of the third. That way you can keep it you know sandwiched together nicely. Yeah, I kind of like that gray. It gives it a neat look. And it totally wasn't just a lazy mistake that I made. All right, there we go. It's a self-contained module. I need to think about how to sandwich this together because there's not a whole lot of space to put these wires. I want to try to keep everything in here. This piece will mostly have the buttons and the main USB cable strain relief. So the D-pad has the furthest to go. It's got to come down here and go all the way down to that area. So let's do this. Let's think about it being closed and then think about it opening up. So it's going to want to try to pull away there. So what if it's like that? That might work. See if we glue down this wire here and put a little bit of a curve there. That way, when we sandwich it together, it will curl itself up inside of the cavity inside of here. All right, now I'm gonna cross-reference from the black side of the cable to the markings here and solder it directly to the PCB here. Flail the ribbon cable with my X-Acto knife. 
okay, I have all the connections made for the D-pad. I have one extra wire here that is click in. I'll just uh, leave that for future use. I'm going to do the same thing with the shoulder button connections, which is this and this, and then the analog stick. There's pigeons down in Market Square. She's standing in her underwear. It uh, totally will still close. All right, let's finish up the wiring. Actually, yeah, the, well, aside from the USB port, this is the last of it, or the last of us. I think I'll actually strip this a good ways back and then have a little bit of slack on my wires. That'll make them easy to fold back up inside the unit. All right, that's everything in the module hooked up. Let's see if it uh, still fits. If I fits, I sits. Let's attach the face button pad. So I'm going to be attaching this to the uh, test points in here. Uh, now, obviously, if I was doing left hand controller, which I will, of course, eventually, uh, a different side of the circuit board would be exposed. In that case, I'd probably just be soldering directly to the contact pads themselves. And right there in the middle, a ground test point. So considerate of them. Of course, if I screw too much together, I'll jinx myself. That is true. I'm going to have to cut off this USB plug to make it fit, but I'll leave enough on the plug so I can reference it. So I've got this uh, strain relief in here. So what I want to do is I want to think about it. Okay, yeah, this thing can open up this far. The wires can reach. So we come up here, tuck into the strain relief, we come back around. All right, I've got a cap over the USB strain relief. I did test this on the computer. It looks like all the buttons are working. So let's screw it together and try out a game. Groovy. Here's the quick overview. We have our X square circle triangle buttons there. We have our L1 R1s there, L2 R2 there, D-pad, multifunction hat switch, right analog stick for looking around, and the lower analog stick for player movement, which sits against your leg. Let's try a game. Okay, let's test this with Cowboy Simulator 9000. All right, I'm gonna go into my weapon wheel, which is L1. Let's go with my fists so I don't accidentally shoot anybody. All right, so I've got it mapped so that moving the controller against my leg moves the analog stick in an opposite direction. See how that works? So back is down, that way is forward, left, right, and you know, this is, you know, red dead, so. Oh, it looks like I need to eat some food. Okay, so let's go here. Let's go to items. I hate kidney beans, IRL, but in this game, I'll eat them. Oh, so now I'm, now I'm right as rain. Go up to my horse, hey horse, and get on the horse. Now I'm on my high horse. Okay, so. On the road again. Just can't wait to get on the road again. Hope I don't get tuberculosis with my friends. I can't wait to be on the road again. Okay. Whoa there, boy. Got aim on L2. And I can look around with the stick here and shoot things. Yeah. Die, rock. Okay, what do I got for weapons? So let's go into the weapon wheel. L2, R2. Oh. Okay, there's my sniper gun. Oh, there's some animals. Okay. Gotta stop my horse. Let's kill some animals. Where'd you go, animals? Oh, and I'm, I'm sure someone in the comment section will talk about the noise of my PlayStation. So I have the original model PlayStation 4 Pro. So yes, it sounds like a uh, jet taking off. Sorry, Bambi, had to put you down. All right. Wait, did I get negative or positive on or I'm confused? I have to eat. I'm totally gonna use every part of this deer. I'm not gonna waste it. 
Oh, I'm probably gonna get like a content warning because of all this blood. So you only have to skin half the animal. It's pretty convenient. I wonder if my horse is hungry. Uh, let's see, how do I feed my horse? There you go, boy. Eat some corn. But this is like my favorite part. Horse is like, oh yeah, nom 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 nom. <laughs> Yeah, let's take some getting used to. Oh, this oh this must be Valentine. All right, I guess I gotta punch these people. This is what the old West was really like, you know. Oh, I can't punch him until there's a prompt. You know, I think Arthur is quite literally pulling his punches with these guys. Who would actually ask for that to be done? It's really easy to uh, overcompensate with this lower stick. Oh, there's my horse. Hey, horse. I missed you, boy. Oh, I never noticed this. There's dream catchers in the trees. Dream catchers. One of 20 found. Oh, another thing to collect? Oh, boy. Your luggage. Where's the corpse? It's like a corpse at Christmas. Pronghorn? Oh, I guess I guess I couldn't be bothered to do the proper animation for that. All right, well, this controller definitely will take some getting used to, but uh, I seem to be able to reach everything. It's I have to kind of teach myself, you know, which stick is which. You know, the looking stick, which is the upper one here, versus the moving stick, which is the lower one. But the important thing is that all the controls are moved to one hand. You can't drop it. And uh, yeah, I think this is a pretty successful test. Well, now I can roam the wild, wild west one handed. Yeah. I could drink a bottle of whiskey or perhaps sarsaparilla using my spare hand and, uh, you know, shoot random animals and people. All right, well, thank you for joining me on this grand adventure to get this controller working. And stay tuned to the channel for more cool builds like this and further information. Oh, and before anyone asks in the comments, yes, I will make a left-handed version of this. All I have to do is mirror the STL files and boom, I have the left-handed version, so not a big deal. Since I'm right-handed, I always start with the right-handed version first. All right, well, thanks for watching.